chains are a true modern marvel of engineering. They're really amazing and they're essential on pretty much every bike. So whether that be a single speed dirt jumper, a multi-geared marathon bike for horizon hunting, a DH sled, a, I mean, you get the picture. They're essential on pretty much any mountain bike. Otherwise we're on a, well, just a really fancy balance bike. So here's some really nerdy tips to keep your chain running as smooth as possible. Let's begin. So it's simply a case of dripping, ooh, big assumption. So before we splash whatever lube we've got, whether it be all weather, dry, wet, wax, whatever lube it is, you can't just splash it on. You've got to have a clean, dry chain to start with. Blake's done a really good video, there's a link down below, of how to make your chain really clean and ready for lube. If you're putting a new chain on, like this one, okay, this is, uh, internet trolls out there, this is the wrong chain for this bike, but it's just an example. If you're putting on a new chain and it's box fresh, uh, just be mindful that most of them have corrosion inhibitors added to them. And that's so that there isn't a sell by date for your chain. Uh, so when you get it, it's ready to go. But before you lube your brand new chain, you'll need to put a degreaser on to take that uh, corrosion inhibitor off. So whether that's a SRAM chain, a Shimano chain, or a KMC chain, give it a degrease before you put your fresh lube on. One thing before we start splashing chain loop about everywhere is to know what I'm talking about. What's a link, what's a pin, what are all the different meanings? So we'll just break down what a chain is. It is pretty simple, but we've got an inner link or plate, we've got an outer link or plate, we've got a pin, and then we've got a roller, and that's it. Now I'm sure there's some proper true engineers out there, not just nerds, and they've probably written a PhD on all the different nuances of how a chain works and how it transfers a quite a choppy pedal stroke into a really smooth uh, power application to the rear wheel. But the thing that we really need to focus on is not any PhD science, it's just where to put the lube, and that's on the roller, that's the key bit. So that roller is much like a bearing, essentially. So under load, it rotates at the chain ring and at the cogs, and that's the bit that we really need to protect. We need to protect it from like grit and grime and dust and water. Not that water per se is bad, but what can happen is it can corrode the pin and it can corrode the roller, uh, and that will make rust and it will wear stuff out. So it's the roller we've got to protect with the lube. Okay, finally you shout, we're gonna start lubing the chain. Well, almost, just woo down a little bit. But before we splash the lube all around, we've gotta work out which one's right for when or for what you're doing. So we'll break it down. The key thing is that we wanna protect that roller in the chain. We wanna have just enough lube that all of the parts kind of work smoothly, but we don't have too much that attracts too much dirt and detritus and then wears your chain out. So it's always a fine balancing point of what you need your chain lube to do, where you're riding, what type of riding you're doing. Um, and there's lots of different brands out there and lots of different flavors, but we'll run through some of the key ones now. Okay, this could be genuinely a video in itself and I feel like I'd find it really interesting, but I feel like some people maybe not that interesting. On the channel, we're using PT stuff and it means we can break it down quite simply. We've got all weather stuff, which as it says on the tin, works across a broad spectrum of terrains. We've got a dry and that's condition, but we'll come to that in a little bit more detail. And then we've got a wet. So all three chain lubes are essentially a wet lube. So i.e. They're, they're in a liquid, but they have, sometimes that liquid is a carrier agent. So with the dry one, for example, this one has got a really high wax content. You'll also get from other brands dedicated wax lubes. And they work in a similar way to PT's dry. So you'll have a carrier agent, which is the liquid stuff. Um, it can be water, with PT's is it, it is wax in a water, so it's an emulsion and that's the carrier agent to get the wax into the roller and you'll have to leave that to dry. With other dry lubes, the wet part, which you can see sloshing around in the bottle, is just the carrier agent and there's smaller bits, which is why you often have to shake lubes, um, and the wet bit is just the carrier agent, so you have to wait for that to wick away. Um, lots of all condition lubes are, again, wet, but will sort of act and ride in a dry way. Um, and then you've got the kind of like traditional wet lubes. Um, PT's one is a little bit different because it does have quite a bit of wax in, so it's quite nice and quite long lasting. But essentially, these are the stickiest, 
the most uh, viscous ones out there. And they work really, really well when um, the conditions are really horrible. So if you're going out for hours and hours in really muddy, wet, gritty conditions, reaching for a wet lube is a good idea. If you're going out in drier conditions and it's dustier, the wet lube might not be the best choice, which is where we loop back around to the dry or some of the wax lubes. Because they don't stay wet, they dry out, it means that they run dry on the chain. So it means they're less likely to attract um, dirt and detritus, which can wear your chain out. However, with some of them, um, Peter's including, that carrier agent is water. So in really, really extreme wet conditions, they might not survive you know, a 24 hour wet winter ride. But that's why we've got options. So it's horses for courses. Lots of people will get very, very excited about their favorite lube, but essentially, it depends on where you're riding and what conditions you're riding in as to which lube is best. Okay, before we lube the chain, we're gonna shift down into the smallest cog, be that nine, 10, or 11 tooth. We've shifted down into the smallest cog because we're using that as a carrier for the lubricant. Essentially, when the roller moves around and when we've got lube on the outside of the roller, some of that sticks to the, to the cog and as we move it around and cycle the chain around, that's gonna help work the lube into the roller space. Okay, this application technique works for most chain loops, uh, but check your manufacturers, because some loops have got really specific uh, techniques. So we're gonna start on the lower side of the chain, and we're gonna start at the chain ring side, and we're gonna work our way towards the rear mech. We're gonna apply a small blob on each roller. And when I say small, I mean really small, as small as we can get away with, on each single roller and just slowly work along the chain. So you may be wondering why we're doing small amounts on each roller, we're not applying just a general stream and squirt all the way along the chain. And that's because A, we wanna save lube and not spray it all over our workshop, uh, because lube is expensive, but also we just wanna get the right amount. So it's a bit like Goldilocks. We wanna have the right amount of lube, so enough to protect that roller, and protect it from getting grit, water, dirt, on the kind of inside edge of that roller, but also we don't want to apply too much that we get gunk all the way on the side plates and and kind of around the rollers where we don't need it. So after sort of lots of practice and reading far too many uh, techniques and guides on how to lube your chain, um, I found that this technique works the best. So small sweet corn size or petit pois, we're going to get really specific sized section of lube on each roller. With each of the rollers nicely lubed up, now we're gonna just backpedal the chain. We're backpedaling slowly, just so that that oil, however thick it is, has got time just to stay attached to the roller. So don't backpedal with much gusto that you'll spray all that lube that you've just applied all over you and all over your workshop. Now what this process does, and it might seem a bit daft, but it's helped work that lube into, uh, underneath the roller and in between the links. I'm using the, small tooth on the cassette here to help that process because that'll move the rollers around. Um, so do that six to 11 times. If you're using a wax chain, such as some of the PT's dry lubes or dry condition lubes, uh, essentially your job is done. All you've got to do is wait for the uh, carrying agent of that lube to, to wick away. So that means depending on where you live, you might have to leave the bike for a couple of hours. In the UK at the moment, you might have to leave it for, well, you might have to leave it overnight and somewhere warm. Um, and that's to leave that waxy coating on and not have any of the carrier residue left. So if you're using wax lube, you're, you're all done. However, for everybody else who's using a wet lube or some other type of lube, you need to get yourself a nice rag, uh, carefully wrap it around the chain with your hand, and then again, slowly backpedal. What we're doing here is just wiping off all the excess lube because the only lube that we want left on the chain is effectively underneath that roller and in between the link plates. Now your chain should have the perfect balance of chain lube. So not too much, but not too little. Um, if you've liked and enjoyed this, let us know in the comments below. But other than that, it's time to go and ride your bike. Enjoy it. Enjoy getting out there on the bike.